kuzo kila siku jana leo na kesho the DCIK story continues to be told today we share with you the story of a young 18 year old girl who joined the DCIKZ in 1985. She met her now husband in the church and have been married for 35 years. Today, she serves in the DCIKZ as a ladies coordinator, a cell group leader, and serves in the couples at Glow Ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, Frida Wafula. My name is Frida Wafula, and I'm a daughter of this house. In 1985, I came to Nairobi. After having completed my secondary school the previous year, and I came to figure out my next phase of my life. And um, I stayed with my brother. And I used to attend a church down just near where we lived. It is called uh, ACK. I think that time it was called CPK. And uh, one Sunday after church, my brother asked me, why don't you go to Pastor Kemani's church? I, I didn't know. I asked him, who is Pastor Kemani? And he told me, there's a church, and a different church that has just been opened, Apo Kwangurue. Actually, that's how he said it, Kwangurue. So I couldn't wait for Sunday to go to Pastor Kemani's church, the deliverance church, actually I was excited because I knew I, I, I knew of and many deliverance churches that were coming up. And uh, the next Sunday I went to deliverance church, uh, Kwangurue, and uh, incidentally I went a little late because it was, I didn't know what time the church was starting. And I found some two young men preaching. That day I didn't see Pastor Kemani. And uh, I looked at them and I was really excited. And I knew, actually I knew I am hooked. And I couldn't wait for the next Sunday to go to church. This time I was able to keep time and I joined the church. And this day it was Pastor Kimani who was, who was preaching. And when I saw him, I knew him from somewhere. Actually I knew him from the school where I attended because they used to come for 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 weekend challenges and i knew him and i was really excited so he preached and uh, incidentally that day he didn't make a a, a, a a nota call i wasn't born born again then he didn't make a nota call but when he said people to come in front to be prayed for i went in front and the person who was praying asked me so what are we praying for and i told him i want to be born again and that is how I got born again in August 1985. After that, I started attending church and uh, I joined I joined the choir. You know, uh, there was no like the procedure, like you wait for a certain time to join the choir. The choir leader just looked at me and told me, uh, you should join the choir because I would sing along with the, with the choir. So I joined the choir but somehow I didn't, I didn't stay in Zimmerman for too long. I relocated to Nakuru to attend school, to attend uh, college. And when I was in Nakuru, I would attend the Deliverance Church Nakuru. And for 1986, I attended Deliverance Church Nakuru. Then I came back to Nairobi in 1987. And so I picked up from there. 1987, I came back to to Zimmerman and I started attending Deliverance Church. We were still at Kwangurue and uh, so I was there for a while until now we moved to the church just up at Chini and I, <laughs> I, I, I continued attending church. Uh, by that time I was actually full in the choir and I sang in the choir and I still remember my first job, I was actually, uh, it was the choir, choir reader at that time who got me my first job. And he was like, I want you to be in the choir because you keep on running home. You, at least this time, you will stick around. And I actually yeah, started working and I really thank God for that. That is called the power of connection. I really thank God for that. And after that, I continued staying in Zimmerman. I got married 
and I had with children. And uh, my children, actually, all of them, my three children, schooled in this church, in this in the in Cornerstone, all of them. During the time I was here, I have really benefited from being in this church. I have felt very much at home. And have I tried to, I ha, have I moved out occasionally? I have found myself out of Zimmerman. Like I remember one time we got a government house, we moved to Sili. But somehow I, I, I couldn't fit in. And, uh, and within that time, I experienced a few challenges. And uh, due to those challenges, I decided to move back, back to Zimmerman. And I still remember I came back to Zimmerman. And uh, a certain lady asked, I, and I, I mentioned what I went through when I was out there. And she asked me, did you, did you receive support? Were you helped to become a beer? No. And she started working with me. Actually, she's Pastor Masika. I don't, Pastor Agnes Masika. She worked with me because uh, within that time, I lost a baby. And uh, when I came back to Zimmerman, she really worked with me. And uh, the, the other ladies, the ones, the ladies that I used to fellowship with also worked with me. With, during that time, I remember we had uh, ladies groups and I used to belong to a ladies group number seven. And the ladies also worked with me during that, that process of healing. And um, apart from that, I also have experienced a lot of support from this church. Uh, I also remember I had a child who also needed medical attention in India. And I came, I remember the first person I talked to when I knew I had this challenge, I went to see Bishop. And I shared my problem and he asked me, Frida, how can we help you? And um, I, I, I told him what the doctors were saying, what I needed to do. And uh, he told me, I, I, I told him now I need money. And he told me we can talk to the church, to the, the church to help us. And for, I, I, I remember I, I looked for the money within three months, three weeks. Within three weeks, I had enough money from the brethren in church and from my friends, and I was able to go to India. And when I went to India, actually the, the church continued following me up, finding out how I'm doing. And today my daughter who went to India is in the, in the university. And for that, I am so, so grateful to this church. I have been helped, I have been, I have also grown. You know, I got born again those years, we didn't have like uh, the new believers. So the challenges were there. You know, the challenges of trying to stand as a born again Christian were there. But through it all, I have seen myself being helped, being nurtured, being developed. I was able to attend the, 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 the evangelism the class. You know, there, was, there are so many classes that we have attended to, to enable us to grow. I've also been able to go through the, the school of leaders and, uh, and I have also attended the ladies coordinators trainings. So for that, I have been able to be nurtured and to grow in faith and to be able to stand. There's so much that we can talk about this church. Like I have seen the church transform, you know, from the Mabati across the road to this place where there's a class out there to the, the bow we used to have a church that, actually this, this sanctuary, it used to be uh, Irikuwa Ya Bao, and then and we had yellow, yellow coverings, yellow, plastics that end covered part of it. Then Ikawekwa Mawe, from there Ika, Ika, you know, to the, to the sanctuary that we, ha we have today. We moved to the tent and came back. So over the years, I have seen the transformation that this church has taken. And also the leadership has also, have also, has, has also changed. Many people have moved out. Others have moved and come back. And uh, many new faces have come. And for that, we are so, so grateful. And for me, I have no regrets from being here. Actually, people keep asking me, you've been here for too long. Have you thought of moving? And I say, yes, but looking at where I have come from and where I am now, I, I don't think I'm going anywhere. My children have grown, some of them, like 
one of them is serving in church. And I am so grateful to God for what he has done over the years in my life and in my family and also in the ladies that we serve with, and to the general public. I know the public actually has also benefited from this church, because like, we go for retreats, we go for witnessing, we go for CSRs, and we do very many things that have also been able to help the, the, the general community around Zimmerman. The DCIKZ has undergone so much transformation throughout the 40 years, both the building and the people. Some of the things that remain constant are God's goodness, faithfulness and masses throughout the 40 years. We know that we may not be able to get all your stories documented, so this week make an effort to share your DCIKZ story with someone because this is my story, this is your story, this is our story. This is the DCIKZ at 40.